Aegon the Conqueror had a vision of ice and fire that he passed down. What was the vision? His vision was that Tom's bunker will start playing Cool Mini or Not, a song of ice and fire. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Tom, this is The Bunker, and we're going to play Game of Thrones. So, A uh, Song of Ice and Fire um, is a book that I, I love the series of books, I love George R.R. R. Martin's writing, and when I saw that Cool Me or Not made a game, <laughs> which has been out for a few years now, um, about this, and I could get a Targaryen army, and a Stark army, and a Night's Watch army, and just spend all of my money on Game of Thrones things, I thought, why not? Um, so, myself and Rockman play, I've got the Targaryen starter set, and I've also just ordered the Greyjoy starter set, which is the newest faction that's coming out, there's Martells coming as well. Um, but the game looks really cool, and the models we can use for other projects, and who doesn't want to paint Dan Daenerys Targaryen, let's be totally honest. So, what is the actual game? Let's have a look. So, I attended the London Grand Tournament with my mates, there we all are. Uh, we're 40k players, uh, don't hold it against us. Um, and, but I've always attended these events just to be part of my mate's group and, and have fun. And one of the things I noticed was the Song of Ice and Fire was playing their largest tournament there. And I was absolutely taken by this straight away. Um, the games look cool. The models look cool. And I was really, really impressed with, I don't know, just the prize support looked amazing. And everything about it, the community were laughing, joking. And that was me set. And I really thought to myself, I want to play this game. There are two types of game happening simultaneously, all rolled into one. So players have combat units, which have associated trays. Now I've magnetised my trays, and the combat units sit together, and each model represents a set number of wounds, and then as a unit that'll move around, connect with other units, spin on the spot, and interact with the game. Now there are other models in the game which is really interesting because there is actually the Game of Thrones aspect of this. So you will have a, an open battlefield where people are shooting bows, war machines, mammoths, giants, monsters, so on and so forth. And then also the Game of Thrones which is played by non-player characters such as Daenerys, Cersei, Sansa Stark. All of the characters that don't pick a sword up so to speak but they are pivotal to the Game of Thrones and the Song of Ice and Fire. Whereby the Intrigue at court, they can select as an activation, drop on one of the zones, and gain this effect on the battle. And all of these characters have their own abilities as well. So it's a multifaceted, you've got a build to kill, and you've got a build to play the game as well. Terrain is all 2D. Um, you could obviously embellish it if you wanted to, uh, but the idea is it's a set area, so you've got like the Giving Tree, and this does something. You've got bogs, marshes, pile of bodies, Ramsey's got you. Cards play a large part of the game as well, down to different game modes such as sieges, the castle walls have stats for health and how much they fire back, secret missions, siege attackers and defenders, but the primary thing is that your units are all on cards. So obviously this is Dothraki Screamer's unit which is four, four models in a tray and everything is easy to see. Movement of six, how many dice they roll depending on how many ranks they've got left and what they need to hit, their defence start, their bravery start. And cavalry, so each one of those models is worth three wounds. And it's as simple as that. On top of that, you can then upgrade units. So, for example, we could add a Screamer sort of champion for a point. And he has gains the units Shattering Assault. So this unit's charge gains Sundering. So they have minus one on their save rolls. So you can upgrade your units with a character and things like that. And they sort of like go together. Other characters in the game. So Jorah Mormont, he's a commander. He can either be added to a unit or he can be on a singular base by himself because he's a specific, there's multiple options for him, as we see there. So we've got the Exiled Knight and the West Rory Tactician. Khal Drogo, as you can imagine, he hits like a ton of bricks. Um, so you can put him in a unit. The Great Khal, Furious Charge and Onslaught. So he's a commander. And obviously you can you can upgrade further units. You can get like Drogo's Blood Knight, Blood Runners and all this sort of thing. So you can... Upgrade all of the units to your heart's content. Your non-playing characters, Daenerys Targaryens in this box, obviously. So, as you'd imagine, you're not going to get a Targaryen box without Daenerys, are you? Conviction of a true Khaleesi. This is the Khaleesi version of her. Um, so when she can't claims a zone on the board, which I've shown you previously, uh, you can gain plus one movement and reroll any charge distances. So she has like abilities to boost the Dothraki from off the field. 
and then Ilrio Mopatis. And again, so once, once he can claim his own and gain an extra reaction. And the game, I think, is actually won or lost on this sideboard <laughs> because it's the most important part. Um, so when you build your force to 40 points, a good seven points there in my starter force is off the board <laughs> because they're, they're all playing the Game of Thrones. One final mechanic is a hand of cards. And these are faction or house specific and they give you little bonuses to the, to the game. And players can manage this as a resource while they're playing. Um, interestingly, depending on the, the commander you take, they add their own cards. Now, some of these have been slightly errated and updated, so we'll update those as we go along. And obviously, the more commanders you add to the field, the different options you've got here, which again, is, is really, really cool. And there we go. That's us starting a Song of Ice and Fire tabletop miniatures game. I'm really excited about this. I'm, I'm a massive fan of, of this writing, this work. The TV programs, I, I love it all. Maybe season eight of Game of Thrones can throw itself off a cliff, but we'll that's another story for another video. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna do some painting, do some unboxing, do some gaming. Really excited to play it, and uh, I hope you join us for this journey. So, um, yeah, what's your favorite house? What, what, what house do you want us to play? So, we've got Targaryens and Greyjoys. I think I have to have Stark, I just think I do. They are like Yorkshire people, anyway. <laughs> So there we go, all men must die, Valar Magoris, Dracarys, Knock and Old, we're playing Game of Thrones. <laughs> I'm going to unbox the Greyjoys next, uh, they're here, they've just arrived, um, so I'll do an, un an unboxing on the Greyjoys to show people exactly what you do get in a starter kit, because when cool me or not say a starter kit, they mean everything, you get tokens, terrain, dice, measuring sticks, models, you get everything in the box, which is amazing, so check out that next, if you want more A Song of Ice and Fire, um, do subscribe. Really nice thank you to everybody that was at the LGT that played this game. They were so welcoming and it was so lovely to see this community and I can't wait to be a part of it. So until next time, stay safe, stay well. Drakaris.